Hello and welcome to the John Ark Show. Today's episode is called Los Angeles, New York, and Austin are now war zones. Before we begin, I want to encourage you to subscribe to our channel for free. You can also like, comment, and follow us. We're going to have a lot of great celebrity interviews coming up, so make sure to click on that notification bell so you can be notified every time we upload a new episode. Also, we ask that you uh, please post a link to our show on your social media to help spread the word. Now, let's get started. Los Angeles, New York, and Austin are now war zones. This is happening for several reasons. First of all, the crime rate is now so bad and so high that it's almost immeasurable. It's increasing so severely that people aren't even bothering to report it anymore because they know in many instances the police won't do anything about it. Next, you have the ever-present sound of gunfire. It can be heard everywhere now. When news reporters do stories on location out in public, they routinely hear gunfire in the background off in the distance or maybe just, you know, a few blocks away and nobody seems to even care anymore. It's like living near the airport and hearing the sound of jets flying over your head constantly. Only instead of jets, it's gunfire. It happens so often that most people now ignore it. Do you know what else you see in war zones? Bodies laying around everywhere. If you've ever been in a war zone, then you know how common it is to see and step over dead bodies everywhere. They're part of the scenery. That's now the case in New York, LA, and Austin. There are so many living and deceased bodies laying around uh, in both the homeless areas, the drug areas, and normal business districts everywhere that, people, that most people ignore them for fear of getting robbed, attacked, or infected by whatever that body has. I'll give you another wartime comparison. During wartime, it's common for people to ignore violence in one area while they focus on another. It's a form of violence triage. Sometimes, uh, it's simply people's inability to process seeing more violence because they're just so busy or so overwhelmed by how much violence there really is out there. We're seeing a similar phenomena take place in major cities with police routinely ignoring crimes right in front of them uh, because they've just decided to focus or prioritize on something else. Sometimes they just don't respond because they know that if they do, they'll get reprimanded, suspended, or sued, and that could be the end of everything. It could also, the litigation, which most cities don't cover now, uh, will also bankrupt the individual police officers. Let me give you another example. In wartime, one of the first things to disappear is your country's borders, simply because it's overrun by the enemy. Your border becomes porous and fractured and, uh, and uncontrolled. People walk across uh, your borders at will and they transport drugs, slaves, uh, supplies, weapons, uh, like like you know, the border doesn't even exist anymore and because to a large extent it doesn't Take a look at what you see happening to the US border and tell me if you think it's secure another phenomenon that happens uh, During wartime is being asked to ration food supplies gasoline and other things There are often shortages of these supplies Take a look at what's happening to the supply chain and distribution chain now and ask yourself is it a healthy and robust and efficient supply chain or is it collapsing? Another area is the financial market. During wartime, we see tremendous problems with the financial market. The amount of debt taken on to support the war effort increases. The amount of currency pumped into the economy increases. The earnings of people hover at about the same level they were before the war. That is similar to what's happening today don't you think? Now, let's talk about something more interesting that happens during wars. And that is that predators get emboldened when they see you're attacked by an enemy. When they see someone attacking you with some measure of success, they're emboldened to also come after you. Look at what our enemies across the world are doing now. They're flying jets and helicopters 10 to 20 feet away from our naval vessels. 
just to disrupt the activity on the ships with their sonic booms. Their jets are also encroaching on our airspace. They're issuing and publishing verbal threats against our country every day now. Look at what's happening on our streets now. Criminals are walking up to police and spitting on them. They're openly and brazenly committing felonies directly next to police officers because they know they won't respond. They're almost taunting them with their criminal activity. Have you seen what happens when a fist fight or a brawl breaks out in a public space or a bar or a restaurant lately? What happens is nothing happens. Most people don't call 911 because they know they probably won't come. But everyone does start to video record so they can post the incident on social media. Now, in past wars, the governments or the military would set up checkpoints everywhere so they could question people for what they claim are security reasons. Have you driven from Jersey to New York or from the southwest border into the interior of the country and counted the number of places authorities can and often do stop you? It's a pretty substantial number. Do you know what else is really common in war zones? People taking the law into their own hands. Have you seen all the looting and rioting taking place in the last two years? What about the schools? Have you noticed how dangerously violent the schools have become in the U.S.? We're no longer talking about the fist fights during recess. We now have riots exploding during class, right in the class, not out on the streets, in the class. And uh, during these riots, the teachers often get beat up very badly. I've heard of one 25-year-old school teacher who has her 10-year-old students routinely walking up to her during class and threatening to rape her because they think she looks hot or good or, get ready for this, because they didn't like the grade she gave them on the last test or assignment. Ask yourself a question. Do you think that anybody, and I mean anybody, in New York or LA or Austin feel safer today than they, than they did three years ago? We asked a lot of people and not one of them feels safer, but many of them feel much less safe. What else do people do in wars? They flee the war zones and try to move someplace safer. What do you see happening in New York, LA and Austin, Texas now? People are continuing to move out as fast as they can. Austin is really interesting because the city had been transformed by the political lunatics fleeing from California to Texas, and now it's been destroyed by them. So what are they doing? They're migrating and they're fleeing Austin. That's right. The, the locusts from California came, they destroyed Austin, and now they're fleeing to other districts. The crime and drug usage and the destruction of businesses in Austin is very similar to what they did in California. The great irony is that all the lunatics who moved there from California to Austin don't even realize that they're the ones responsible for destroying the city of Austin. Take a look at New York and California. The mass exodus from those states is now taking place on a biblical level. And I'm not just talking about individuals or families. I'm talking about the companies. Look at all the major corporations that are now relocating their staff to Florida. It's incredible to see. In public, these creepy companies are still praising the policies of California. But in private, they're ordering their staff to move out of California and go to Florida if they still want to keep their jobs. Go online and check out the latest and newest form of looting that's taking place in, in these cities. It used to be that a dozen or so people would flood into a store and grab the most expensive items and run out. Now, it's not a dozen people. Now, they'll organize looting groups of more than a hundred people who will all show up at the same time. They'll, they will run into the store and completely empty the entire store within a, a minute or two. It is, it is unbelievable to see on social media. What I'm telling you is not an exaggeration. They will literally empty the entire store. Do you think that's why a national drugstore chain recently announced that they will be closing another 800 locations? I suspect so. Be very vigilant if you're going to New York or LA or Austin because you may literally be stepping into a war zone. With that, I want to thank you for watching. I want to encourage you to subscribe to our channel for free. You can also like, 
comment and follow us. We're going to have a lot of great celebrity interviews coming up, so make sure to click on the notification bell so you can be notified every time we upload a new episode. Also, we ask that you please post a link to our show on your social media to help spread the word. Thank you, and we shall see you soon. Goodbye.